I'm going to share with you a dozen books that have had a huge impact on my life and I highly recommend them. So this is my dozen books that I call the non-leadership leadership books, which means they really help us all lead in a really profound way, but leadership is not in the title of any of them. So I'm Karen Valencic, and I am the founder and author of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. And I've worked for three decades with leaders and teams, in particularly in the context of conflict, mastery, and collaboration. So personal performance is really important for the leaders and the people that I work with. So I'm gonna go through each of these books and I'm just gonna share why the book was so relevant to me. And I hope you take the time and read some of these if they speak to you. So here we go. The first book is Factfulness by Hans Rosling. And I'm going to read this subtitle because it's kind of long. 10 Reasons We're Wrong About the World and Why Things Are Getting Better Than We Think. Um, this was a fantastic read, and this is an example of, of some of the books I've read where I've had excerpts, I've seen some videos, but reading the book was so profound to me. So he was a Swedish doctor, and he spent a lot of time in all kinds of parts of the world and did all this research, and he came up with 13 questions that he has posed to a lot of different groups of people around what their view of the world situation is. And most of the people, even the people that are out making decisions, answered those questions wrong. Now, I found this totally fascinating, and if you're in business, you should read this book because it's really gonna tell you to look for the trends that are going on in the world. I wanna offer a secondary title for this book, and I call it The 10 Instincts That Sabotage Our Critical Thinking Skills and Create Conflict. Really rich book, pick it up. The second book is Breath. The New Science of a Lost Art, and this is by James Nestor. I have read this book three times, and I will probably read it more, and if you can see my book, I've got a lot of notes in it. I found this really fascinating, and Nestor is not a breathing expert, although he probably is now, but he's really a curator of information. So he goes through the history of how powerful breathing is. And in my work, I teach people conscious breathing so that they can start their day, and there's so many health benefits to it. And there's a lot of different types of breathing, and he goes through all of those types. And so this was eye-opening for me. I practice breathing almost 10 minutes every morning, and I certainly learned a lot in this book. Highly recommend Nestor's Breathe. The third book, I don't have a physical copy right here, but here's a picture of it. This book was a delight. So if you want a really good, heartwarming story, this is a book for you. The title is Into the Magic Shop, A Neurosurgeon's Quest to Discover the Mysteries of the Brain and the Heart and the Secrets of the Heart. This is by James Doty, and he writes a beautiful story about autobiography about his childhood and how it informed him. It's a very magical book, and you know, Dr. Doty is with the Center for Compassion and Altruism Research at Stanford. And his book is fantastic, and he's doing some fantastic things out there around compassion in the world. Check it out, and I understand that he's got a second book coming out soon. So that's a just a good, easy read. Enjoy it, enjoy it. Okay, so book number four is Power Versus Force, The Hidden Determinants of Human Behavior by David Hawkins. He's a MD, doctor as well. This was fascinating, and in, in my work in Spiral Impact, power versus force is a key grounding part of my work. I didn't think I'd learn anything from this book because I thought I knew everything already <laughs> about power and force. 
But this was very eye-opening. Now, let me warn you, for me, the first part of the book was a little little hard to go through, and I'm going to say I'm, I skipped a couple chapters. But he did a tremendous amount of research using kinesiology, determining how people respond in the world with power or with force. And it's really eye-opening. He has a scale of one to a thousand around when people use force to operate in the world and, and when they use power. And power is much gentler, actually, than, than you might think. And there's a, a mean point of 204, which is the average person. So this book is a, a, a really great read, and I'm not going to go into great detail, but again, be warned if you don't get into it right away. It, it's For me, it was just a little meaty and research at the beginning, but then I just found it fascinating. So check that one out. Okay, so number five. This book is called This Naked Mind by Annie Grace. And I have to say, this book profoundly changed my relationship with alcohol. And I'm not going to say I totally quit, but I did totally quit for about a year and a half because of just reading this book. Now I have much more of a handle. My red wine doesn't control me. I control it. And it's, I've really reduced the amount of alcohol that I drink and my preference for it. You know, what I noticed with me, and it was during the pandemic, I found I was drinking at least a couple glasses of wine almost every day, and it kind of controlled me. I didn't feel like I had a big problem that I needed to go to some of those meetings that you hear about, but I did know that I was a little bit letting this control me. And I, I read in the New York Times about her book, and this book really transformed how I view alcohol in a way that's not about shame, guilt, and it really aligns with the work I do with Spiral Impact because it's really about, it's not about willpower, it's really about getting knowledge, getting support, getting centered, and really being clear on intention. And it's a very powerful book. I don't ever buy this book to give to people as a gift. I tell people about it, and I let them buy it themselves if they're interested. And I'll tell you, I have quite a few friends that have also had a dramatic impact on their drinking when they read this book. She also has some online courses and support for people as well. So as we come up on the first of the year, you may want to check that out. Okay, book number six. I was a little off put by the title of this book, Outwitting the Devil. It just seemed like a title that didn't attract me. Um, this book is written by Napoleon Hill. Many of you will recognize his name because he wrote a very famous and classic book called Think and Grow Rich, which Andrew Carnegie actually urged him to interview people that were very successful, find out what made them successful. Fascinating with this book, his family wouldn't let this book be published for 72 years after it was written. And I think they released it in 2011 because they were afraid that it would ruin Napoleon Hill's reputation. Let me give you just a warning. When he uses that word devil, he's really referring to negative thoughts and habits. So I really enjoyed this book, and I hope you do too. Book number seven has a special place in my... Okay, book number seven really touches my heart. It's Journey to the Heart of Aikido, The Teachings of Ano Sensei by Linda Holiday. Now, if you don't know me, I am a practitioner of a martial art Aikido, which is out of Japan, and it literally translated, it's the the art of peace or the art of, of reconciliation. And it's something that all of my work is all grounded in. And this book is just a, another level. It's not really about the technical aspect of the art, but really about the heart of Aikido. It may not be a book for everyone. Actually, I have it up next on my bedstand, and I, I read it at night when I if I wake up, and it just kind of really delights me. So that's another book that I have read multiple times. So number eight is 10x is easier than 2x, and it's by Dan Sullivan and with Dr. Benjamin Hardy. 
and I actually heard Benjamin Hardy on a podcast, and it, it really was interesting, but um, the subtitle is How World-Class Entrepreneurs Achieve More by Doing Less, which doesn't sound really new to me, but I really found this book really helpful. A couple of the key things in it that have really inspired me is, one, is that if you really want to improve 10x, then you need to quit doing 80% of the things you're doing. That's, and I've been, I've been cutting out things that I had been doing. It really gets you focused. And that's his premise is if you, if you spend your time, you spend most of your time, 80% of your time in doing things that really matter and cut everything else out, you have real focus to achieve. The, so one of the other things in this book I really love that I'm talking about your past self, future self, and your present day self. I really love the idea that one is that your past didn't, didn't happen to you, it happened for you. And if you can look at your present circumstances and recognize that these things in the past happened for you, you can find the lessons in them. And then the also thing about thinking of your future self, and a lot of people, including myself, we don't tend to see ourselves expanded in the future. We kind of see ourselves as something version of where we are now. I found this book really inspiring, and I hope you do too. Book number nine. Um, this is one of the ones I've read most recently, and I really love this. It's called The Art of Learning, um, An Inner Journey to Optimal Performance. And it's by Josh Waitzkin. And if you've heard of the movie um, Searching for Bobby Fischer, which was about a chess player that kind of vanished. Well, that book was written by Josh's father because Josh was a very young prodigy in chess. When his father published that book, it kind of ruined his life and he quit chess. But then he went on to go study Tai Chi. It's similar but very different than Aikido that I practice. He goes through his process of learning and study. It's not going to be like any other book or any other guidance that you're probably going to see. Enjoyed this book and again I love hearing people's stories about how they've gone through life. So this is Again, a really great read. Okay, number 10. This is Brain Energy by Dr. Christopher Palmer, who is with Harvard. He's a psychiatrist at Harvard. This book, I think, is really going to be a, a, an informational thing for our future. Mental health is such a gigantic issue in our country in this period of time. Um, so the subtitle of this is A Revolutionary Breakthrough in Understanding Mental Health and Improving Treatment for Anxiety, Depression, OCD, PTSD, and more. And he actually connects brain energy with mental health, and he also connects it with, with our physical being, and so that our mental health is really connected with our physical. He uses a lot of research in which he shows how our metabolic health through our diet and our exercise and all those things that we do has a huge impact on our mental health, providing a pathway for some different solutions because you know medication never really solves the problem of mental health. It solves it temporarily, but it doesn't heal it. I originally listened to this on a podcast, found him to be really fascinating, so I, I got his book. So I hope you enjoy that as well. Number 11. Hey, I can't have a list of dozen books without my own book, Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. This is um, uh, my black belt edition of, of my book. And by the way, I just passed my third Don black belt in Aikido. But this work is really about how to master conflict and how do we deal with all the things we interact with, whether it's ourselves, another person, a group of people, events, even things. And how do we interact in a way that gives us energy gives us engagement and is positive and moves us forward rather than getting stuck into some kind of fight and resistance. I highly recommend my own book, so check it out as well. Book number 12, I'm gonna admit, I haven't finished this book. This is the book I'm reading right now, but I'm really intrigued with the topic. It's called Anti-Fragile by Things That Gain From Disorder. Hey, that sounds like a book we all need. And I, I really love the premise from this. And Nason Nicholas Talb 
is the author. And I am just really intrigued in terms of what this book has to share with us. But different than resilience, where we bounce back to where we were, this is where disruption really makes us stronger. And that really is aligned with the work that I do with Spiral Impact as well. So check this book out, and I, w I might be writing more about this as I finish it. So those are my 12. I would love it if you would put in the comments what your most profound books have been recently, because I'm always looking for more books, and there's many out there. Well, so that is all I have right now. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and like this video if you'd like and, and comment uh, because it helps me bring more videos. That is it. Um, until next time, bye-bye.